Hello, my name is Dr. Stephen Smith, and I have the privilege and the pleasure of serving as the director of the Central Virginia Governor School for Science and Technology. Each year in the spring, we have a very special event that we call our recognition reception. And it's an opportunity where we celebrate the achievements of our students and the contributions of our program partners. Well, this year, obviously, things are going to be different. So in talking with the staff and the students, we decided we didn't wanna miss the opportunity to celebrate and say thanks. And so we're creating this video for our 35th annual recognition reception. So now, on with the show. All right, that's cut. Okay, good. Oh, oh wait, one more thing I almost forgot. So um, when schools closed and our brick and mortar building shut its doors, we immediately opened our virtual doors. And due to the unique nature of our program and the equipment we provide our students and really the dedication of our staff and students, we lost no instructional time moving to our distance learning plan. Now there were a lot of unforeseen challenges and a whole lot of extra work. So everyone has been really, really busy. However, when I came up with this idea of a virtual recognition reception, a video, I asked the ambassadors and I asked the staff and everyone enthusiastically agreed to add this extra work to their workload which I think really talks about the spirit of the CVGS learning community. So if you're watching on May 14th at our watch party, would you please make supportive comments for all our speakers? And we can start right now with one special student speaker. Uh, when you see a graphic in this video or a transition or you hear music, anything like that, all of that work was done by Noah Keeney. So we can start with some supportive comments for Noah and all his efforts. And now, really, on with the show. Grayson Adams, and each year as we begin our recognition reception, we always recall why the Governor's School was established in 1985. The Governor's School mission is to be a dynamic educational community, a community that develops leaders who possess the research and technical skills, the global perspective, and the vision needed to address the challenges of our rapidly changing society. Now, clearly the mission is just as important as it was today, as it is today, as it was in 1985. My fellow students and I appreciate the time, energy, and resources which were invested into the CBGS program and into our education. Me personally, my base school is Heritage High School, and I love Heritage, um, but they definitely don't have some of the opportunities that I've been able to have at the Central Virginia Governor's School. I've really entered a community of learners in which I've been able to grow and learn a lot more about myself and how to be a intelligent member and leader in society. So accomplishing this CVGS mission requires the support of superintendents, school boards, principals, business partners, and CVGS families. So we're going to take a few moments to specifically acknowledge some of the people who support the Governor's School. The Central Virginia Governor's School has students come from 10 different high schools in the region and five different um, school systems. And from each of these, we have superintendents, board members, and division advocates that help us achieve our goals. We have some CVGS parents, such as Mr. Gregory Smith and Dr. John Hicks, and we also have a, some Gov School graduates, such as Dr. Sarah Merricks. And all of these people are so essential in helping CVGS achieve their goal and helping CVGS students have the best education possible. So we want to thank all of these people. Hi, my name is Madison Markham. Grayson is right. Central office administrators and policymakers are essential to our program, and we should thank the principals and guidance counselors at each of our 10 high schools as well. These educators support CVGS by explaining the program to prospective students, considering governor school students when creating their building's master schedules, and by continuing to advocate for governor school students on a daily basis. We sincerely appreciate the time and dedication of these CVGS school advisory board members, and we thank them for their support. 
Personally, I would like to acknowledge Jefferson Forest's newest principal, Mr. Brian Wilson, and thank him on behalf of Jefferson Forest students like myself. While our principals and school advisory board work at the school level, CPGS has two foundations that work at the community and regional levels, and many of the board members are CPGS graduates or parents. These two boards help raise funds and promote the development of partnerships between business and industry and the Governor's School, and we are very thankful for the energy and expertise of our board members. My name is Anthony Marasini. The CVGS Foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit, and the Foundation's board works to raise funds for and manage the CVGS Foundation Endowment. CVGS parents, graduates, and community partners donate to the Foundation, and their donations are invested. The Endowment's earnings pay for what we call our Margin of Excellence activities. These activities include supporting highly specialized student research projects and funding research trips, paying for the purchase of our advanced technology like our scanning electron microscope, and funding all the students' award awards and scholarships we will present. Like the Foundation Board members, our Industrial Advisory Board members are very important to our program. They help secure placements in our, for our internship program, assist with our Senior Engineering Grid Project, provide feedback at our annual research symposium, serve on our Scholarship Selection Committee, and help us acquire and repair our technical equipment. Members of the board are also essential to our mission at the Governor's School. And these are the names of the current members of our CVGS Industrial Advisory Board. Now I invite Shardul Nafde, Armel Duston, and Chris Murata to share their information about one of the primary focuses of the Industrial Advisory Board, our CVGS Internship Program. Hello, I'm Shadul Nafde, and this is the 35th year of the CVGS internship program, which has opened up so many doors for students. This experience allows students to step out of the classrooms to explore the real workings of potential career fields. Over 200 organizations representing Central Virginia have supported our interns over the years, including business, industry, healthcare, and governmental agencies. This year, Almost 70 students were interns at the locations listed in your program. Like many of my classmates, I completed a medical internship with Central Health. The Central Health internship allowed us to learn about various healthcare fields and take special tours within Lynchburg General Hospital. As we progressed through our internship, we met professionals from a variety of health services fields who shared their experiences and offered advice related to possible educational and career paths. Later in our internships, we visited various departments at Lynchburg General Hospital or worked with private practice clinics or offices. All the medical interns are sincerely grateful to Lisa Stewart from Central Workforce Development who coordinated our weekly activities. Good afternoon. My name is Armel Dustan and my internship was with Framatone. Through the internship program, we learn about the details and requirements of life in the working world, and we do so under the guidance of our internship mentors. We learn to be more independent and self-confident both in our interactions with professionals in the workplace and in our approaches to problem solving. We are grateful to companies like Framatome who are willing to allow us to enter their workplaces, and we're even more grateful to those individuals who volunteer to be internship mentors. As an intern at Framatome, I was introduced to the complex world of nuclear and electrical engineering. My partner, Hunter Bowles, and I worked together with our mentors to create a simulation that modeled processes in nuclear reactors. The project involved Python programming, as well as physically building the simulation apparatus. Hunter and I were involved in distinct parts of the project, yet we continually worked together to ensure that our final product would be cohesive and representative of both of our efforts. Throughout the process, I learned valuable lessons about project management, resourcefulness, and the value of cooperation between groups. The time I spent at Framatome was an extremely worthwhile experience, and I'm incredibly grateful to both Framatome and CVGS for the opportunity. Hi, my name is Chris Murata, and while many CVGS students express interest in an internship in health sciences or engineering, there's a great variety of opportunities available through the CVGS internship program from architecture to education and marketing to wireless communication. Mrs. Coghill and Dr. Douglas work to place each junior into an internship that fits his or her interests. In my internship, I worked with Centra Health's Information Technology Department. 
As an intern with Lynchburg City Schools IT department for the last few years, I was interested in having another perspective of the IT world. Ms. Coghill and Dr. Douglas made that possible for me. This internship was an incredible experience where I got to work alongside highly knowledgeable and kind individuals. I was given a variety of opportunities such as shadowing technicians as they help maintain the computers which allow for our local hospital system to function, all the way to helping automate basic reporting tasks. I also had the opportunity to continue my internship through the summer where I would get to work on an incredibly exciting project. I got to help develop a prototype iOS app that would allow for data collected by devices such as smartwatches to be used by doctors to assist in diagnosing patients. It was because of my CVGS internship that I learned a completely new programming language and got to work on an incredibly exciting project. And now, without further ado, I have the pleasure to welcome the one, the only, Dr. Scott Douglas, CVGS Assistant Director and Coordinator of the Internship Program, who will help us thank some of this year's internship sponsors. Hi, I'm Dr. Douglas, Assistant Director and one of the faculty members here at Central Virginia Governor School. I also have the privilege of serving as the internship coordinator. Coordinating the internship program is a complicated process and not something I could do alone. I work as part of a team along with Ms. Kim McMillan and Ms. Michelle Cockhill. And together, we interview each student, make the best possible internship matches, and ensure we have the, all the appropriate paperwork in place in every case. We also personally introduce interns to his or her mentor and visit each student on site at least once during the internship experience. And so I want to thank Ms. Kim McMillan and Ms. Michelle Coghill for all they do to make our internship program so very successful. The program that accompanies this video lists the 2020 internship sponsors, and we're very pleased to note that we have four new sponsors this year. As our students have shared with you, the internship experience is extremely valuable for them. It is only through the generous donations of time and energy on the part of our internship sponsor organizations and the individual mentors that we can provide these opportunities. We would now like to recognize those companies celebrating a milestone year of participation with the CVGS internship program. Our first group is our four internship sponsors who will receive frame certificates this summer. And they are FOSTEC, H-I-L-I-F, LLC, Lynchburg Museum System, and Piedmont Community Health Plan. Also to receive frame certificates are two companies who are celebrating five years. Those companies are Delta Star Incorporated and Virginia A&E. Receiving plaques for their longstanding support, we have 10, 15, and 20 year companies. 10 years with the Gulf School Internship Program is Lynchburg City Schools. And 15 years, we have Peaks View Animal Hospital. And with 20 years of continuous internship sponsorship, we have L3 Harris and Novatech. Finally, celebrating a remarkable 30 years of internship sponsorship, Abbott Laboratories, the Ross Product Division. And now, I'd like to turn things over to Ms. Kim McMillan, our CVGS Program Coordinator, who will tell you about one of the most prominent leadership opportunities available here at the Governor School, the CVGS Ambassador Program. Hello, I'm Kim McMillan. Being selected by the faculty to serve as a CVGS ambassador is an honor, as many seniors apply, but there are only a limited number of positions available. During the course of the year, the primary task of the CVGS ambassadors is to give tours of the Governor's School to visiting middle schoolers, business leaders, and prospective students. They also welcome and assist students and their parents at our program overview nights and new student registration, and make presentations about the program at foundation events. All of our student speakers today are CVGS ambassadors. And now to tell you more about being an ambassador are Ian Garland and Claire Cocker. Hello, my name is Ian Garland. Ms. McMillan gave an astonishing overview of what it means to be a CVGS ambassador, but the position really goes much further than that. Wherever a CVGS ambassador goes, we are always aware that we are representing our classmates as well as our school. For example, last October, Chris Murata, Claire Cocker, and I were given the opportunity to travel to the Roanoke Valley Governor's School. There we were able to work with other students from varying governor schools in the area. Each year the students are split into various teams and challenged to come up with a solution to a real world issue. This year we were challenged to figure out a way to temporarily fix an electrical substation. 
We did this by determining the best transformers and wires to use and then the best places for them to be located. After we discovered this information, we had to model our findings on an Arduino board. This challenge offered us the opportunity to build upon our teamwork and decision-making skills while representing CVGS adequately as an ambassador. Hi, my name is Claire Cocker, and as Ian said, we were really proud to be able to represent the Governor's School at an event like this where we got to collaborate with students who go to a school like ours. Now I'd like to take a moment to recognize someone who holds a special place in the hearts of the ambassadors, students, and staff alike, and that's Ms. McMillan. Ms. McMillan is the fearless student of the ambassadors because she keeps us organized, which is quite the task, and she always has our backs. She does this on top of all of her other duties at Governor's School, which can include anything from the managing the foundation financial records, to sending out student selection letters, to manning the front desk with a warm presence that she brings to the Governor's School every day. I know she's one of the first people I go to if I ever need help, and we all have a crazy amount of respect for her just because of her ability to handle each task with grace and skill. And so for that reason, we say thank you so much, Ms. McMillan, for everything you do. We know Governor's School would not be the same place without your presence. Now, Ian and I have the pleasure to introduce the rest of the ambassadors, some who you have met before in this video and some who you will meet throughout. So thank you, and here we go. <laughs> Grayson Adams, Kelly Booth, Armel Dustone, Katie Harrison, Summer Hensley, Noah Keeney, Laurel Logan, Madison Markham, Christopher Murata. Anthony Marcini, Daniel Murray, Shardul Nafte, and last but not least, Natalie Torres. At this point in the program, I have a special message for our students. For juniors, we are going to be able to let you keep your laptops over the summer. So we know that's very important to you. For seniors, while we can't let you keep your laptops, when you return them, we will give you some special keepsakes. The first, every graduating senior will receive a certificate of completion and you'll receive your CVGS honor cords. In addition, this year, we have a special lapel pin that was designed by Dr. Scott Douglas and you'll receive a copy of that. For those of you who win awards this evening, you'll not only receive a certificate for the award, but many of you will receive a custom CVGS medal. Some students will receive a copy of Kevin Scott's new book. Kevin Scott is a graduate of the Governor's School. Those who receive scholarships will actually receive a check in an envelope, and I know that's exciting. And finally, all our graduating students will receive a yard sign to commemorate their time at CVGS. Now this sign was designed by Scott Kirkwood, who is a graduate of our program, and we hope you will display it in your yard proudly. We are so very proud of you. Hello everyone and greetings from the Central Virginia Governor's School. I thought the kids might like to see the facility, although it's uh, pretty empty without them. Our next two presenters are ambassadors who are among our most successful student researchers. In fact, they both had the opportunity to travel to Phoenix, Arizona last year for a full week for the International Science and Engineering Fair. And I had the pleasure of traveling with them. And they're not only fantastic researchers, they're marvelous young people to spend time with. I'd like to introduce again, Natalie Torres and Shardul Nafte. And oh, by the way, for the first person who can comment with their name and the day of the week I shot this video, you get a free Gov School sweatshirt. As Dr. Smith said, I'm Natalie Torres, and I had the opportunity of participating in the International Science Fair last year in Phoenix, Arizona. If you refer to your program, you will see a listing of the junior research projects, including a notation of any awards or recognitions received. While time doesn't permit us to recognize all of our students' achievements, we'd like to bring your attention to some highlights from this year's research. 
It is my pleasure to note that at this year's Central Virginia Regional Science Fair, CVGS students won numerous category awards and special awards. Nine first place category awards and all four grand awards. More specific information about the awards is provided in the program that accompanies this video. Hello again. As Natalie said, CVGS had nine students who qualified to represent the Governor's School at Virginia State Science Fair. Natalie will now highlight each of our regional science fair grand award winners. Winning the grand alternate in biological sciences is Daryl Sneed, and winning the grand alternate in physical sciences is Ariel Jackson. And now we congratulate our two award winners for 2020. Winning the grand award in biological sciences is Andrew Chi, and winning the grand award in physical sciences is Yumi Ribler. At the state science fair last month, which was of course held virtually, three of our nine students were recognized with state level awards. Daryl Sneed took third place at microbiology, Megan Knight earned an honorable mention in physics, and Demi Ribbler earned an honorable mention in system software. One of the other research competitions that our juniors compete in is the Virginia Junior Science and Humanities Symposium. Last year, our next speaker, Daniel Murray, won the right to attend the National Symposium in Al Albuquerque, New Mexico, where out of 30 state winners, he took third place in the poster competition. Daniel? My experience at the Junior Science and Humanities Symposium was unforgettable and extremely rewarding. I'm happy now to have the opportunity to share information about this year's symposium. Due to the CDC's recommendation and school closures, the presentations were held virtually, making the competition even more challenging than ever before. This year, six students were selected to present their research virtually at the state-level conference, and one of them, Wolfgang Pluck, was selected to present at the National Symposium in April. Congratulations, Wolfgang. While our students receive support from state and national organizations, we also receive support from many local organizations as well. One of those organizations, the Optimus Club of Lynchburg, has been supporting CVGS research for over two decades. Now, one of last year's winners, Callie Booth, will share more information about that honor. Hello, I'm Callie Booth. This is the 23rd year that the Optimus Club of Lynchburg has recognized two juniors for the visual display of their research projects. The students who won this award were judged based upon the overall effectiveness and aesthetics of their research poster, and the winners of the 2020 Optimus Club Research Communication Award will receive a $50 gift certificate, a numbered medallion, and an invitation to be a special guest at a future Optimus Club lunch meeting. Being able to present at an Optimus Club lunch meeting is a wonderful opportunity to interact with and present your research to local leaders. At this time, I would like to announce the 2020 winners of the Optimus Club Research Communication Award are the following two juniors. Eden Allen and Anne Frances Harrison. Even more locally, our final recognition for research is a special award that is granted by our three CVGS research teachers. And the three award winners from last year, Katie Harrison, Armel Duston, and Claire Cocker, will be presenting the CVGS Outstanding Achievement in Research Awards. Please give it up for Ms. Michelle Coghill. Research is perhaps one of the most challenging processes that CVGS students encounter, but it is certainly the most rewarding. From the inception of their research to its presentation, passion continually shines through their projects. I hope you all are immensely proud of what you've accomplished. However, as you all know, we did not get where we are without help. This CVGS staff member is our biggest cheerleader. Not only is she our internship liaison and social media coordinator, she is our lead research teacher, coordinating the research course and mentoring two thirds of the junior researchers every year. At CVGS, we are proud and lucky to be able to call Ms. Michelle Coghill our head research instructor. She puts attention and care into each of her students' research projects and is always ready with some good advice. It's thanks to her hard work and diligence that every CVGS student gets to experience the entire process of researching, from the very first Google searches all the way until presenting their own hard-earned research results. Each year at the end of the research process, the research teachers meet to discuss all the year's projects. They come together to consider the students' efforts and the quality of their work throughout the entire year, from the project design stage through the presentation stage. These faculty members then take on the difficult task of selecting just a few students whose work was so exceptional that they deserve to receive the CVGS Award for Outstanding Achievement in Research. 
It is now our pleasure to announce the recipients of this year's 2020 CVGS Outstanding Achievement and Research Award. This year, there will be four recipients due to the exceptional amount of commitment and passion they showed in their research projects. And the winners are Emma Llewellyn for her research on the effect of music therapy on different displays of behaviors in patients with dementia. Buck Arthur, the effects of various cushioning materials on the pliancy of a running surface over time. And Ben Bankston, comparing microplastics presence in both indoor and outdoor environments. And Katie Salmon, for her research on the effect of zinc sulfate on cholera infections as modeled by E. coli. Congratulations to all the recipients of this year's awards. As a junior math teacher, I have had the privilege of teaching almost all of our juniors. And while this year has brought some challenges at the end, I have been so impressed with the motivation and dedication of all my students. Even when we were not meeting face to face, my students showed up every day and continued to work to their typical high standards. Choosing a math analysis award and a junior calculus award is always so difficult as I have so many students who have not only shown aptitude for advanced mathematics, but also have demonstrated excellence in their work and a desire to dig deeper into each topic. The students I chose this year not only embodied these characteristics, but they also always explained their work perfectly, worked well with their peers, and were willing to ask questions in order to gain a deeper understanding. This year's Math Analysis Award is for Drew Flint. This year's Junior Calculus Award is for Eden Allen. Hi, Dr. Douglas here, and I would like to announce the recipients to this year's Excellence in Physics Award. There are two award winners each year, and this year we had 71 outstanding students in physics, so it was a very difficult decision. Before we announce those um, award winners, though, I would like to take just a moment uh, to let you all know how lucky I feel and how much I appreciate to be, to be in this community of learners. Uh, without missing a single instructional day, students really stepped up, attended classes, and showed what it meant to be a Griffin. You guys continued to participate, completed assignments, and did everything you were supposed to at a time when I know, know a lot of other traditional schools um, had difficulty getting students to show up to class at all. So thank you all very much for showing that kind of leadership and motivation. This year, the two recipients of the Physics Award are Haley Earsing and Stephen Merholtz. So uh, congratulations to those two students, and also congratulations to all our seniors, and good luck to you on your next chapter. Hey, I'm Ms. Cockhill, and I have the privilege of working with all the juniors during the year through research. And I want to say how impressed and proud I am with how well you have to all transition to the online platform. What an amazing group of students who continue to show up and work during these strange times, even when it changed our plans and activities for the spring. Thank you for your dedication and desire to be part of the virtual CBGS community. For right now, it's my pleasure to present the William & Mary Leadership Award. Being a William & Mary alumni myself, I enjoy being able to present this award. So in 2016, the College of William & Mary invited CBGS to participate in a program designed to recognize outstanding high school student leaders throughout the Commonwealth. The William & Mary Leadership Award was established to recognize a single high school junior in each school. The faculty of the school are charged with selecting a student who serves as an example of leadership based on several criteria. The student should have a strong academic record, demonstrate creative thinking, actively participate in classes, volunteer in the school or community, earn the respect of teachers and peers, and work well with others. Now, it needs to be clearly stated that this recognition does not require any interest in attending William and Mary, nor does it carry any advantage for admissions or scholarships to the college. The purpose of the William and Mary Leadership Award is simply to allow the faculty of each participating high school to shine a light on a high school junior who exemplifies the positive characteristics enumerated in the awards guidelines. And the CVGS College of William & Mary Leadership Award winner for 2020 is Alicia Mays. Congratulations. Hi, my name is Summer Hensley, and one of the highlights of senior year here at Gulf School is getting to enroll in Senior Technology Labs. So Senior Technology Labs are six-week courses that students get to enroll in 
based on whichever topics they're most excited and passionate about. So there are over a dozen courses offered here at Gulf School. And some of these include microbiology, biotechnology, scientific photography. Plus this year we added three new courses, which are drone technologies, laser engraving, and virtual reality. So with over a dozen options to choose from, the three that I picked were 3D design and print, electronics projects with open source platforms, and mobile apps programming. All of these were exciting and educational, and my favorite by far was mobile apps programming. This was because it allowed a creative outlet for me to create something that I envisioned into reality. So let me give you an example. For my final project, I got to write and code an entire choose your own adventure story in which the character, which is the main player, you, was trapped on a deserted island and they had to defend it from evil pirates. Hi, my name is Noah Keeney and I would like to share my experiences with the virtual reality and video production senior tech labs. So as Summer mentioned, virtual reality is just one of the few new senior tech labs that the Gulf School offered this year. However, with virtual reality being such a new and budding technology, it was something very different from what they had ever done in previous years. And so when Dr. Mr. Douglas approached Christopher Murata, Caleb Gross, and myself to help him develop this new class, I knew it was an opportunity of a lifetime that I could not turn down. Our job was to ensure that all of the new technology was set up and functioning properly, as well as establish a foundation of software and programs that the next group of seniors would be able to use to create a curriculum for future generations to learn from. It was such an honor to be able to work alongside my peers and superiors to create something that future generations would be able to complete and experience. Then I moved on to the video production tech lab. It was here that under the guidance of Mr. Howard, I was able to create a promotional video for the virtual reality tech lab that the governor's school would use to advertise its new technology to prospective high school and middle school students. It was also here that I was able to develop and hone my skills that would give me this amazing opportunity to work alongside our director, Dr. Steve Smith, and bring this video to you today. And it is for these reasons that I am immensely grateful for the Governor's School and the opportunities that they provide through their senior tech labs. My name is Laurel Logan, and I would like to share with you a little bit about 3D design and printing and LTC. LTC stands for Leadership, Teamwork, and Communications. In this lab, we were given readings or videos on leadership, teamwork, and communication that we would come together and discuss and implement through various activities. One of the most notable activities is a game called Artemis, where all the LTC members work together as officers on a spaceship. We each have a different role with different abilities and information, so we have to communicate effectively under the intense circumstances to protect our ship and allies. In the LTC lab, we each led one of the group discussions, and during the discussion, we all got to practice our new communication skills in a safe, easy environment, and then transition the skills to other environments simulated by the activities. The lab encompasses such a broad area of content, so we were able to push it directions that interested us, work on aspects of teamwork or leadership that challenged us personally, and have that safe learning environment to lean on. The next lab I will talk about is 3D design and printing. In this lab, we all learn a specific software called Fusion, which allows us to design objects we can then 3D print. One of my favorite aspects of this lab is how individualized it can be. After learning the initial software, we can choose to go on and explore other softwares, which will allow us to design different types of objects more easily. We can dive deeper into learning more complex abilities of Fusion. We can learn how to scan 3D objects to then print, or we can explore laser engraving. The laser engraver is new to CVGS. With it, we can engrave photos or images onto wood, cardboard, glass, and other surfaces. While I was in the lab, I actually started exploring how to engrave curbs, curved objects, such as glasses or mugs. 3D printing is a lab where we get to be creative and utilize high-tech equipment to make tangible, sometimes even useful, creations. The teacher for 3D design and printing is Dr. Mr. Douglas. Dr. Douglas is the assistant director at CVGS, and he also teaches physics to all the juniors, coordinates internships, super, supervises CVGS club activities, and leads two more tech labs, drone technologies and virtual reality. Alongside that, Dr. Douglas is known for going all out on spirit days, mercilessly throwing egg drop projects, making lots and lots of puns, and being a pretty fantastic physics teacher. 
Biotechnology allows students to explore many different research techniques, including DNA extraction, chromosome identification, disease identification, and do a mock crime scene DNA analysis with gel electrophoresis. The Scanning Electron Microscope Tech Lab allows students to learn how to use a state-of-the-art microscope to view their own specimens. After about 45 minutes of training and a skill check, Dr. And Mrs. Douglas allows students to use the microscope on their own. This opportunity is rarely afforded to high school students. Personally, I'm very thankful for the SEM because I want to enter pathology and the SEM has taught me skills that I know I will use down the road. Over the past two years, I've had Dr. And Mrs. Douglas for every subject that she teaches at the governor's school. So that's research, SEM, biotech, microbiology, and anatomy and physiology. And overall, I can say that I'm very thankful for her tough love and her growth mindset through all those experiences because it's really encouraged all of her students to be independent learners and to be able to make valuable contributions to the real world even after we leave Gulf School. Next, I'm going to talk about Ms. Shiflett. Now, she teaches math analysis or calculus to all of the juniors. She also coordinates several of our senior tech labs. Me personally, I participated in scientific photography where Ms. Shiflett really helped us be creative and she helped us get what we needed to make our projects exactly what we wanted. And it resulted in some really cool pictures, which was such a fun experience. Mr. Steele was my Calc 2-3 teacher this year, and his class was one of the most influential that I've ever taken. I was encouraged to develop strong critical thinking skills in an environment that made me excited to come to class every day. I truly feel prepared to delve into more complex math over the next four years, and for that, thank you, Mr. Steele. We have just two staff members that we haven't highlighted yet. One doesn't teach any tech labs, but that doesn't mean she doesn't help with any tech labs. That's our custodian, Miss Deborah Wilson. First, I would like to recognize our custodian, Ms. Deborah Wilson. Ms. Wilson has been at the Governor's School for over a decade and she's committed to ensuring our facility is always safe, clean, and inviting. Often visiting students and parents comment to me on the cleanliness of our building and Ms. Wilson's consistent effort is the reason for all of those compliments. In addition to all of her custodial roles and keeping it clean, and all that, Ms. Wilson also assists in the office by working with attendants, she covers the phone, prepares mail, she makes trips to buy supplies, and just in general, she really helps all our day-to-day -day operations in any way that she can. Yay! We love you, Ms. Wilson! Love you, Ms. Wilson! <laughs> Hey guys, Noah here. Really quick, I was just editing the video and I realized that there's one other person that we have to recognize before we move on. Thing is, this person actually left themselves out of the script because of course he would. And so I don't think he's actually expecting to be recognized right now. And so, Dr. Smith, I hope this comes as a pleasant surprise to you when you're watching this on Thursday. What shouldn't come as a surprise, however, is just how much I and everybody at the Gov School appreciates all that Dr. Steve Smith does for us. Not only is he our director, but he is also our connections and mathematics teacher, our LTC lab teacher, and our junior statistics teacher. And I'm sure I'm missing something because the list just goes on and on. The sheer amount of hard work and dedication that you give to every single person that comes in contact with this program is astounding and admirable to say the least, and even then that's an understatement. I'm sure I speak for everybody at CVGS when I say that there is not a soul in the world that I would have preferred to be our director for the past two years. And so, Dr. Smith, thank you. And please, try not to be too mad at me that I slipped this past you and got this in the final edit. Now it's time to highlight the final staff member. He's last, but definitely not least. And we have one of his colleagues to kick off this special recognition. Six years ago, I was given the opportunity of a lifetime to teach at our wonderful governor's school. While I was beyond excited to teach the best and the brightest students, I was also apprehensive about working alongside of such an amazing faculty of teachers. It didn't help that I was also given the office and room of another math teacher who was moved down the hall to the room that contained the server. What I found was a very dedicated staff who were all so willing to help me and make me feel like part of the team. That same teacher whose room I took over, shared material with me, answered my many questions, and even taught my classes for each one of my maternity leaves. And what better way to thank him, but by taking over his room once again five years later in the new building. 
What I admire most about Steve Howard, as is evident in what I previously described, is how much of a team player he is. He always goes above and beyond what is expected and is willing to take on new challenges for the good of the program. He is often at work behind the scenes and most people never realize how much he actually does. From preparing 140 computers each summer to teaching both math and computer science courses. What means the most to me though is how much he made me feel like an equal from the first day I met him. He always has a listening ear, kind words of advice, and of course that sarcastic charm that we have all grown to love. Here's to another 10 years, right Mr. Howard? Now we will hear from some other past faculty from CVGS and some current students as we honor 30 years of dedicated service. Steve, many congratulations on 30 years of service to Governor School. Looking back on my paltry 17 years, I appreciate it was truly my privilege and great fortune to have you as a wonderful colleague and close friend the entire time. I especially cherish the memories of my first several years when we were the math department. Life was good in the ivory tower, not only concerning mathematics teaching, but you led and mentored me through such activities as internship meetings and presenting to prospective students and parents at the open houses. I sincerely hope you enjoy and appreciate your last few years at CBGS. You have so much to be proud of. All the best. Hi, Steve. Wow, 30 years on the CBGS staff. What a milestone. Congratulations. Two other notable distinctions come to mind. When you first joined the staff 30 years ago, you were the youngest member. You were a little rough around the edges then. Now, 30 years later, you are the oldest member. I wonder what that looks like. Seriously, congratulations and hope you have many more good years. What can we really say about Mr. Howard? First of all, you taught me numbers count, and yes, 30 goes to infinity, so you could be at Gov School forever and ever. Um, that we can meld mathematics and biology together. And right now, just think of all those numbers and viruses, yes. And Mr. Howard, viruses really are not alive. Just wanna make sure you knew that. Um, that you're really an icon and that you're not a wahoo. And that's an internal story that we have together. Um, information age makes you balding, yes. And you really made the beach research fun. We got to rock along the waves and Grandview Beach was pretty cool. So with that, Mr. Howard, I think it's really time for some um, bedtime math because that's where the real truth comes out. But before I do that, let me just ring the bell Congratulations. Hey Steve, it's Jane and Cotton here at our little apartment on Kenmore Farm in Amherst. Wishing you hearty congratulations on your achievement. And uh, I brought Cotton along because I didn't know that you would recognize me with my COVID-19 hairdo. At any rate, Steve asked us to share with a memory or inside joke that we shared over the years that we worked together. And it dawned on me that would take all day. So because every day was a different day. At any rate, I've been doing a little calculation. And when I left, there, the rule was that if you, your age and your years of service added up to be 80, then you got your full retirement. <clears throat> well, I calculate that at this point, you're up to 112.5%. So when you choose to retire, I wanna make sure that you do that little calculation so that you get what you deserve because you have surpassed any expectation of any school system that I know of. And 
I did just want to let you know how proud I am of you, and I love you. So you take care. Congratulations, Steve, on your 30 years at CVGS. You were great to work with the years I was there. You helped often with computer and network problems. I'm sorry, when I retired, I left all those tasks to you, but I am enjoying my retirement. May all of your memories from CVGS, like my special driving skills, bring a smile to you in the years ahead. In the meantime, continue the good work that you've always done. When you decided to join the Governor's School faculty, I was so excited because I knew your skills would solidify the CVGS math program. Now, after all these years, you have the longest tenure of any faculty member. Your teaching and technical expertise have enhanced the program for all students. Congratulations, Steve. Joan Rolls, one of the original staff members from the Governor's School, wasn't able to send a video, but she did send these words. So, Steve, I heard on the grapevine that you've been teaching at the Governor's School for 30 years. Wow, that's a lot of years and a lot of memories, mostly good ones, I hope. I remember meeting you for the first time in the original Magnet School office, which has since been demolished, when you came to interview with Tom and Cheryl. As I recall, you made a really good impression on the staff, and we must have made a good impression on you because you're still there. Congratulations and best wishes for the next 30 years, Joan. CVGS is lucky to have Mr. Howard. I had the fortune of having Mr. Howard as my math teacher this past year, and it was in his class that I learned he isn't just a math and computer science teacher. He also teaches what his students fondly refer to as life lessons with Howard. He fills the class with many fun anecdotes and other fascinating stories from his life. So we get to learn helpful tips for navigating life after high school while also learning to let the sliver slide throughout the bounded region. His love of learning and sharing the knowledge he's acquired always shines through. He's done a wonderful job here at CVGS for the past 30 years as a phenomenal teacher, incredible mentor, and amazing friend to both his colleagues and students alike. Yes, congratulations, Mr. Howard. Now, I'm here at Gov School by myself, but I am still wearing a mask, albeit a different one, and I'm wearing it to illustrate that here at CVGS, the students not only work hard, but they have fun. We have a spirited community, and this is a costume that was made for me by Mrs. Shiflet for our Superhero Spirit Day, and I think it's fantastic. At this point, I'd like to recognize students who have done remarkably well with their academics here at the Governor's School. Our courses are very challenging, and so we want to recognize those students who were able to earn straight A's in any marking period for this year. And those students are recognized in the program that accompanies this video. We also have a special notation for students who were able to earn straight A's in their courses at Gov School for the entire year. And that, again, is noted in the program. But we can go one further. We have a handful of seniors who have earned straight A's on every marking period in every course and on all their semester exams for both years of their time at the Governor's School. And I think this is absolutely fantastic. We call these students our All A's All Stars. And so at this time, I'd like to recognize each of these students and we have a special medal for them that will be presented to them later this year. Our first All A's All Star is Armel Dustan. Next, Madison Gallagher. Laurel Logan. JT Lotes. Madison Markham. Shardul Nafte. And Abigail Pitts. Congratulations to our All A's All Stars. This is our Connections in Mathematics classroom. It's not a lot to look at without the students, but we have a lot of fun in here when we have class. And this year I'm delighted that I've been able to select a student who is not only an excellent scholar, but also someone who looks out for his classmates and is always excited about learning new practical applications for mathematics. This year's winner 
of the Connections in Mathematics Award is Daniel Murray. I had the pleasure of teaching an amazing group of young people this year in Calc 1-2. It was difficult to pick an award because each of them is smart and engaging in their own way. The difference maker though, this person never took a day off from inquiring and wanting to know more. This year's Calc 1-2 award goes to Madison Gallagher. Congratulations, Madison. Yeah, I'll be back in a few. I have to go heat my coffee. <sighs> Made it back with my warm coffee. This group of computer science students behind me are magnificent. Many had never programmed before, but it wasn't long before we were all up to speed and messing with objects and Tkinter and abstract data types and more. The recipient of the Computer Science Award made gigantic strides from picking up new programming techniques to applying their amazing problem-solving talents. I am excited to announce that Armel Duston is this year's Computer Science Award recipient. Congratulations, Armel. Oh, <clears throat> this group of seniors in Calculus One was outstanding in their performance throughout the year, and it was truly a privilege to teach you all. Although many of you made great strides in your mathematical reasoning skills and knowledge, there was one student who consistently performed at the top of the class, scoring a few perfect exam scores along the way. The Calculus One Award recipient for this year is Tim Hannon. Congratulations, Tim. In Advanced Calculus, all of you impressed me so much with your tenacity, ability to grasp advanced topics, and make connections within units. You challenged me throughout the year to find ways to challenge you, a teacher's dream. This award came down to splitting hairs, as many of you performed at a high level throughout the course, and I couldn't be prouder of you or this year's recipient of the Advanced Calculus Award. It is my pleasure to announce J.T. Lotz as the winner of the Advanced Calculus Award. Dr. and Mrs. Douglas here to announce the winner for Excellence in Human Anatomy and Physiology. This year's award winner really showed dedication and hard work throughout the entire year of anatomy and physiology. This year's award winner is Caroline Wigboldy. Hi, Dr. Douglas here to announce the recipients to this year's Senior Technology Seminar Award. There are three recipients this year, uh, which was a very difficult task because there are so many outstanding students in various tech labs. And I kind of wish that students could hear how much the faculty this year advocated for students in their technology labs. Not only because of the outstanding academic achievement, but the genuine interest that you showed, the, the ability to go above and beyond the technology lab, and so it was a really a difficult decision for our faculty to make. So a great congratulations to these three students and these three recipients to this year's Senior Technology Lab Award. Congratulations to Brett Bowman, Callie Booth, and Noah Keeney. I'm back at Gov School because I wanted to show you something that relates to the next few very special awards. Here at CVGS in our main hall, we have what we call our permanent honors display. And on these plaques are engraved the names of the winners of the most prestigious awards at the Governor's School. And these awards include the Brandy Nichols Leadership Award, the Larby Mensa Memorial Scholarship, the Foundation Scholarships, the Ann C. Wells Scholarship, and the single most prestigious award available to students at the Governor's School, the Faculty Award of Excellence. I'd like to start with a shout out to the seniors who have persevered during these tough times, showing up every day and getting it done. This is what it looks like to talk to the entire senior class via Zoom. The Brandy Nichols Leadership Award Scholarship was established in 1993 and is in honor and memory of Brandy Nichols. If you look up CBGS student in a dictionary, there'd be a picture of Brandy. She was a go-getter both inside the classroom and out. The Brandy Nichols Leadership Award is given by the faculty to a student who consistently demonstrates an optimistic outlook, initiative, and leadership throughout the many educational experiences here at CVGS. I am excited to announce that this year's recipient 
is Ian Garland. Congratulations, Ian. Dr. And Mrs. Douglas here to announce the Larby Mensa Memorial Scholarship winner. This scholarship was first established in 2013 to remember Larby and celebrate his life. The faculty award this honor to the senior who most exemplifies the positive spirit, enthusiasm, and energetic friendliness that Larby demonstrated on a daily basis. Receiving this honor and a $1,000 scholarship is this year's winner, Christopher Webb. Good afternoon, CVGS. My name is Kim Tibbs. I'm a 1994 graduate of CVGS, and I'm currently serving on the foundation board. This year, I was privileged to be part of the foundation board scholarship committee. In 1988, the Central Virginia Governor's School Board of Directors established a $500 scholarship to recognize an outstanding CVGS student or students who demonstrated academic promise, leadership potential, and strong moral character. Due to the contributions of CVGS families and business partners, this year the foundation will award five, five thousand dollar scholarships to five very remarkable students. The scholarship winners were selected after both a paper application and something a little different this year, a Zoom presentation and interview with the scholarship board. Those of us on the scholarship committee were impressed by all the applicants. And at this time, I am pleased to announce the 2020 Foundation Scholarship winners, whose names will be added to the permanent plaque commemorating this award. So in no particular order, the first winner of the $1,000 Foundation Scholarship is Christopher Murata. Our second winner is Daniel Moon. Next, we have Katie Harrison. And our fourth winner is Jamel Smith. And last but not least is Shardul Math Day. Congratulations to all the winners. We call the most prestigious award available at the Governor's School, the Faculty Award of Excellence. Each year, the faculty has the very difficult challenge of identifying two students who exemplify the values of the Governor's School. These two students need to be exceptional scholars and very high achieving academically. They need to make the most of the opportunities provided in our program, and they need to be student leaders, reaching out to their classmates and strengthening our community of learners. This honor not only comes with names engraved on the plaque and the permanent honors display, it also carries a $1,000 scholarship for each honoree. I am delighted this year to announce that the winners of the 2020 CBGS Faculty Award of Excellence are Madison Markham, and Shardul Nafte. This is only the third year we are awarding the ANSI Wells Memorial Scholarship for the Advancement of STEM Fields. The ANSI Wells Scholarship provides $15,000 each for one male and one female winner. These funds help defray the cost of earning a STEM degree at a four-year college or university in the United States. Recipients are eligible to renew this $15,000 award for three additional years for a total of $60,000 each. Before we announce the winners, Dr. Smith will share a little information about Ann C. Wells. Ann Caldwell Wells had deep Virginia roots. Born and raised on a small farm outside Lynchburg, Ann helped her father with all manner of farming chores, even learning to drive the family tractor at a very young age. Ann's upbringing instilled in her both independence and an early understanding that abilities are unrelated to gender. Supported by a family that believed in education, Anne was an A student in chemistry and mathematics, graduating with honors from Lynchburg College in 1965. Anne was a lifelong learner, and she earned a master's degree in education from the University of Virginia when she was 55 years old. Anne started her career in education as a general science and chemistry teacher for Campbell County Schools. She served in that capacity for nearly 20 years. She was then promoted to supervisor of math and science, where she served in the central office for another 16 years. Ann Wells passed away from cancer in 2011. She is survived by her two children, Kimberly Wells Bell and David Bowling Wells, and by her five grandchildren. David, a 1989 graduate of the Governor's School and Brookville High School, and his wife, Sonia Moore Wells, established this scholarship to honor David's mother and to share her love of education and STEM fields by helping support the higher education of two deserving CVGS graduates each year. And now, to announce the 2020 winners of the Ansi Wells Memorial Scholarship for the Advancement of STEM Fields, Mr. David Wells. 
Well, good evening, Central Virginia Governor School. I'm David Wells, son of Ann Wells. Uh, Steve was nice enough to let me uh, announce this year's winners via this video. I know we're all gathering virtually. What a strange time we find ourselves in, especially right now for our grads and our college students. Uh, my heart's out to you. It should be a time where you're gathering with friends and hugs and congratulatory high fives. And we've got to do this virtually, but um, adaptability and perseverance is definitely being rewarded right now. First, thank you to all the applicants and finalists. I know it's a very, very tough decision. We set up this scholarship with a committee at Central Virginia Governor School making that decision. I don't get to make it, and I'm glad I don't, because I know how hard it is from the hard decisions that they pass along. They share the essays and the finalists um, with me, and I know that they, that they have a very tough time making that. So thank you to all the finalists and applicants. Uh, it was a tough, tough decision. So let's announce the winners. Um, the first winner is, I thought this might be more interesting than reading an email. Uh, so the first winner of the 2020 ANSI Wells Scholarship is Kennedy Elena Campbell. Congratulations, Kennedy. The second winner is Caleb Ryan Groves. Congratulations, Caleb. Kennedy and Caleb join our returning scholarship participants or winners from 2019, Sarah Green and Matt Ogden, and from 2018, the first year, Kayla Vance and Andrew Childers. So congratulations to all our graduates of 2020 and to our winners and good luck. Thank you. Okay, I think we're on, but uh, oh, yeah, so much static. All right, Ms. Coghill, would you please adjust the rabbit ears on the Right. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, Mr. Steele or Mr. Howard, would you please adjust the rabbit ears on the set? Yeah, so just, just move it uh, maybe to the right. Okay, it's it's getting better. And then, uh, yeah, and then just turn it a little. Uh, yep, there it is. Oh, but now we can see that we've got the rolling. So, Mr. Howard, you know where the vertical adjustment knob is in the back? Yeah, if you would just dial it a bit no too, um too far and just yeah perfect all right fantastic so you're probably wondering why is dr smith on a black and white tv well i want to make a point the point is that 60 years ago black and white tvs they were the standard color tvs were just becoming mainstream heck we use something called rotary dial phones and yeah students you can google that and now you have in the palm of your hand a personal computer that is infinitely more powerful than both of those technologies. And I just wonder, as we look around at the devices we've been using, what is it 60 years from now people are going to look back on and think of as we think of black and white TVs? Uh, the ideas are amazing to me. And, and I think back to when I graduated high school, which, okay, granted, it wasn't just yesterday, but when I graduated, Thinking about the ways we've been connecting and teaching for the last nine weeks at Gov School, that would have been in the realm of science fiction. I, I couldn't have imagined it. And, and here we are. And I mention this because right now, it's clear to all of us that we have daunting challenges in the world. But the world's always had daunting challenges. And the world has always had people who are willing to rise to meet those challenges and with the rapid change of technology and it shows no signs of slowing down with that rapid pace of change we need leaders like the graduating class of 2020 students who understand research and technology math and science and who are committed to learning more and doing more people who are not afraid to take risks and innovate and work in teams successfully these are the leaders we need it goes back to the mission statement that Grayson shared at the beginning of this video. And we have those leaders in the class of 2020. And I'm really optimistic about the future because I know there are caring, committed, capable people like our students in the class of 2020 who are going to solve the problems and be the leaders for us tomorrow and into the future. And so now I want us all to take a moment to congratulate the class of 2020 for all their hard work and everything they've accomplished and to encourage them forward as they start the next chapter of their educational journey. These students are wonderful young people 
and they are going to do amazing things. So now let's celebrate and congratulate the class of 2020.